BBC Radio Kent. Call Jules. Morning. I'm Jules and this morning we're discussing Ramsgate and ferries and what Ramsgate should be and whether or not there is any prospect of it becoming a part of the picture to solve any issues in the post-Brexit world, particularly in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Do you want Thanet to do whatever is in the national interest, including uh, giving the port up to the government and asking them to run ferries out of it? Did you, do, you, do you trust Chris Grayling, the Transport Secretary, after the collapse of the contract with Seabourn? Love to talk to you this morning about what you want in terms of the future for your town or the whole of Thanet, if that's where you live. It's all about you this morning. Call Jules 0800 756 1111 or text Kent to 8133. Julia George, BBC Radio Kent. Karen's called in. She happens to be a councillor, a county councillor for Ramsgate, the Labour councillor for uh, Ramsgate. Karen, really nice to talk to you this morning. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. I just listened to the programme. I was driving up to my and I thought I would pull over. I'm in a lay-by to talk to you about how fantastic Ramsgate is. Let's talk about it then. Do you live there? I do. I've moved to Ramsgate about seven years ago, fell in love with the place. Absolutely love it. Love the port area, love the harbour, love our fantastic uh, uh, beaches and chalk cliffs. It's actually the most fantastic place. And I think one of the sad things that's happened in very recent weeks is all the footage of uh, Ramsgate has, has been of the port. And the port is somewhat dilapidated. And if people have got the impression that that represents Ramsgate, that's not you know, that's not quite the case. Now, that's a, uh, let me jump in. That's a really interesting point. When you are proud of a town and you represent a town politically and yeah. and the images in the media are of a largely mothballed port, aren't they? That The council, the local council, has been paying to sort of, well, Sir Roger described it as semi-mothballing it for the last five years. That ain't ever going to be a good image of your town. No, it's not. And interestingly, when you stand in the harbour, I mean, I stood with a journalist yesterday and uh, she said, oh, it's just so beautiful. And I think we all stood there and we went, it's just so beautiful. And that's the point. Ramsgate actually has an incredibly bright future if we can just grasp the metal. I mean, I think Councillor Mark Beverly Martin is quite right. We need a bigger vision for the town and we need something that ignites the local economy and the local imagination. But I think we've got to go further now and really engage the local population, local people in looking at what we can do, not just with the port, but the whole of our coast area. That's something that really sort of promotes the area, puts people first, jobs first, etc. Something that really respects our rich maritime heritage and something that really um, is engaging for people. In in the meantime, Brexit. Yeah. I get that that's a long-term vision and y- y- you somewhat share Beverly Martin's vision. Um, uh, she, she referred to a sort of wharf culture along the lines of San Francisco. But with Brexit yes. sort of sticking its head up um, in, in the way potentially on the 29th of March, and certainly if it's a no-deal Brexit on the 29th of March. Um, what, what is, in the short term, what does Ramsgate need to be? And do you concur with Sir Roger that, Th- and I wrote down his words, he said, we want Thanet to do whatever is in the national interest. Um, do you agree? No, I think Ramsgate Port at the moment is being used somewhat as, as a political football. I mean, there's a, there's a travesty of due diligence when you think about what actually has happened with Seabourn Freight. I mean, it's a complete and utter mess. And as I, say, as I keep saying to people, at the moment, it's the taxpayers in Thanet that are footing the bill for this folly. And whilst ever they're paying money into the port that doesn't work, that is, in fact, money that could be better spent somewhere else. Didn't but but there's no evidence yet, is there, that the taxpayers of Thanet have paid anything specific to do with reigniting the ferry capacity and the seaborne contract? Or is there? Well, do you know something we uh, don't? Well, we have employed a consultant called Robert Hardy to look at the future of the port. We pay for officers' time to manage this situation with the government. Uh, councils are certainly involved in this. Mm. There is the uh, the impetus to keep the port very ready. 
and it has been kept up up till today. It is, in fact, very ready. But it kind of does fly in the face of uh, evidence. There aren't that many ships out there that can use uh, use the wharfs there because they're frankly not that big enough. And modern boats are much bigger. So really, we're reaching we're sort of reaching a concluding period. I think if there aren't any boats that can use the port, then we need to move on. And I think that's where Beverly Martin is quite right. We need to look at the future ongoing. So do you? It, it, let's be really clear. Do you say in that case, shut down the prospect of Ramsgate being used in any sense as an emergency ferry port for a no deal Brexit? Do you want to close that one down? If the, if there isn't, I think it should be time limited. If there isn't a ferry company that steps forward to run that service, and if they can't sign a deal with Ostend Port, with the mayor there to bring their ships across from one place into our port, then clearly if there isn't a, you know, if it isn't commercially viable, then nobody is going to run it. And the same, I hate to say it, can also be said for Manston. I mean, Ramsgate's kind of a Brexit sandwich at the moment, you know, and the hard cheese in the middle, unfortunately, is, is Ramsgate. These things have to be finite. I mean, Brexit hasn't just happened. It's been in the making for the past two years. You know, the, 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 de- the, the big day is the 29th. We're getting closer and closer towards it. None of us would enter into this idea of keeping something open-ended. If the government want us to keep the port open, then I think the government have to give the funds to Sonic District Council to do that. But let's not forget that 63.8% of people in Thanet, not just Ramsgate, but Thanet, voted to leave the European Union. Now, if they feel that strongly about it, then surely it is reasonable to say, well, this is what Thanet can do to help that process. And that will include giving any amount of time to the port to be open, to bring emergency supplies in, whether those are medical supplies or whether those are just-in-time car parts to keep you know, the economy running. Surely uh, you can't even start thinking about a different future at the moment when this is what the people of Ramsgate voted for. It is what they voted for. And I, it, I, although I although I didn't vote to leave, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I voted to remain. I obviously do respect the, the, the vote of other people. That's quite right. However, people, it's, it's a separate question. At the moment, the taxpayer in Sanit is paying from their hard-earned cash to keep the port in a a very ready condition. And that can't be an open-ended process. One of the outcomes of keeping it as an open-ended process without some central government funding is going to be job losses. Now, nobody wants to see job losses at the port. You know, that's the last thing that we want to see. The government need to step up their action. If they want the port to operate, they need to fight, they need to underwrite the process. They need to cover off the losses that Sanic District Council is currently making. They need to prevent any redundancies. And they need to, to be blunt, they need to show us the ships because where are the ships? Do you, do, you have com- do you have any confidence? I'm, I'm guessing as a, a Labour councillor, I'm on a hiding to nothing even asking this question. But Sir Roger Gale says, says he has, still has confidence in Chris Grayling and would be happy for him and his department to take over uh, Ramsgate Port. Do you feel the same way? All I will say is I think Chris Grayling has earned his moniker, failing Grayling. Are you sure that's all you want to say? <laughs> I don't think Chris has covered himself in glory, has he? So does that mean that you don't think that that's a Roger Gale's idea of the government taking over the port is a, is a goer? I think if they can underwrite the cost to the public and if they can find the ships and the company to, to, to run that service, then it, and it needs to be run in the national interest, then I think that should go ahead. Nobody wants to stand in there the way of emergency ferries bringing in, you know, vital NHS supplies. Of course we don't. But I think it's looking extremely unlikely and I think the debacle that we've just gone through with the complete collapse of the Seaborne contract shows that no proper due diligence was done. And actually, the chances are, if Chris Grayling and his team get involved again, we could have, this, we could have that as a, as a, on repeat, basically. I think, you know, at some point you do have to draw, draw a line underneath it. And I'm much more excited by the idea of, of Beverly Martin about what the port could be and actually, you know, getting people involved in the whole issue about regenerate, economic regeneration in Ramsgate and across Thanet, really, to improve social mobility, to improve health, to improve our education. You know, there's a whole... Raft- All of which would suggest that locally Brexit is a distraction. 
Well, Brexit is happening, isn't it? So you, you might say it's a distraction. I mean, it's becoming really intensified, isn't it? You switch the radio on in the morning and it's Brexit. Um, but it is in process and nobody quite knows. I mean, I don't think anybody really knows where this is actually going to end up. You know, it doesn't feel to me that we're actually going to be in a very clear position on March the 29th. I mean, I am, you know, my personal preference would be for a general election. I mean, I think that is what's needed. Well, at the moment, you'd lose it, wouldn't you, <laughs> according to all the polls? Well, um, we we did really well. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, but we did do really well. But it would give people a fresh opportunity, wouldn't it, to, to decide who they want to run the country. And I think at the moment... I don't hear anybody, anybody on this radio station and elsewhere, and I do consider this programme to be quite a good kind of touch paper for the people. Okay, I do not hear is. anybody phoning in and demanding a general election. OK, well, maybe it's just me then this morning. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is. Karen, it's been great having you on the show. Thanks for calling in. All right, anytime. Bye-bye. Cheers. Karen Constantine, County Councillor for Ramsgate for the Labour Party. 1016, your call could be next. 0800 756 1111. What's your vision for the future of Ramsgate and in particular the port? 